What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This video is going to be about China banning sissy boys, reality TV shows, and TikTokers for cultural crackdown purposes. So what that means is the Chinese government has decided that they don't want their young people to be exposed to what they call uh, effeminate men, sissy boys, and reality TV stars, social media stuff. So let's break that down. Number one, let's just get out of the way. China is crazy. It is crazy to think that in 2021, a country can realistically ban stuff like Google, TikTok, social media, Facebook, and actually control what their citizens spend their time doing. They also recently said that men are going to be restricted to only three hours a week of video games, which once again is absolutely bananas. And I can tell you, it is probably absolutely miserable for somebody living in China to have simple things like doing what you want with your spare time restricted by the government. Now, as far as this goes, what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what we can learn from it. Straight from the article. China to ban sissy boy bands, reality talent shows, as cultural crackdown continues. The state media regulator is calling for a boycott of pop acts that don't conform to macho standards as well as overly entertaining and vulgar internet celebrities and influencers. The poor guys that they threw on the cover of this are the TF boys. Man, I swear there's a boys everything. Trailer Park boys, TF boys, Proud boys, the boys. Like, boys, we get it. There's a lot of boys. Anyways though, it's these three young, good looking Chinese dudes and they all have the same TikToker fuckboy haircut. China's ongoing crackdown on the country's entertainment industry stepped up a notch on Thursday after the state media regulator called for the boycott of sissy boy bands and effeminate men on television. Okay, so what do they mean by this? Traditionally, when you think of a effeminate man, a sissy man, you think two things. You think physical, but also mental. So what is a physical sissy or effeminate man? A sissy or effeminate man physically would be somebody that doesn't take care of their body, doesn't take care of their health, doing things that are more associated with women as opposed to men. Generally, they are thin, not because genetically they're thin, but because they don't lift weights, they don't exercise, they don't have high testosterone levels. They're usually not necessarily unhealthy, but they're definitely not healthy. When you're young, you get away with everything, right? You can eat like crap and you still look and feel good. But as you get older, that stuff catches up on you, right? You ever see those guys in their 40s that are really skinny and they have a beer gut? That is what we would consider a sissy or effeminate man that has grown up. Now, they're also talking about mostly physical appearances, but the things they do, right? So as the article goes on, it's the end of reality talent shows and a ban on vulgar social media influencers among a raft of other measures. So what they mean by this is basically young guys like this that are going on social media and displaying a lot of vanity. So like, hey, look what I have. Look at my nice car. Look at my nice house look at all these girls basically flexing which is something that insecure vain people do right hey like you know i got bullied in high school so here's me with a mansion you know what i was a fucking loser but now i have this many followers on social media because i do this like that is what they don't like and in particular they don't like it because it's these guys that are doing it so when you think of when you were young you usually had like a mentor a hero, somebody you looked up to. Obviously, for most of you guys, you probably had a father that was a big impact in your life. You looked up to him, but you also had cultural icons. And by cultural icons, I mean people you looked up to that were not necessarily family members, right? For example, I'll give you guys my heroes, all right? Jordan Peterson. I love the way that he's been able to improve the lives of so many men with his teachings, and I think that he is an inspiration and people should look up to him. I also idolized a lot of rock stars when I was growing up because I grew up listening to rock music. So I love Jimi Hendrix, I love Radiohead, Kurt Cobain, uh, all these classic rock bands, Queens of the Stone Age, Josh Homme. These are all guys I absolutely idolize. And then I also idolize certain athletes like George St. Pierre, an amazing mixed martial artist, right? So there's all these people I look up to and the more I think about it, a lot of them tend to be on the masculine side, right? The macho side. But there's also guys I look up to that were considered effeminate sissy boys. For example, Kurt Cobain. The guy was very emotional and he expressed that emotion and stress and anxiety through his lyrics and his music, right? Which is what makes music great. So yes, I definitely grew up looking up to these people. 
But only recently was I exposed to this whole reality TV, social media influencer thing. And I've, I've actually lived that life and am living that life. And I know what it's like on the other side. And it's not good, guys. It's not real. Imagine your business is showing people how great you're doing with stupid materialistic things like cars, houses, followers, and girls. It's a joke, right? It's totally misleading and it's what people are completely obsessed with and exposed to on a regular basis. So the Chinese government here, they think that not enough of the people that young people are looking up to are macho or masculine. And I don't necessarily think they mean macho or masculine as in like big, strong, muscular guys. They don't mean that. They don't mean guys that are going to war or a military complex. I don't think they mean that either. I think what they mean is traditional males, okay? And when I say traditional male, I mean somebody that is not distracted or influenced by the many vices in society, such as money, fame, and women, okay? The people that are successful on these social media platforms are basically telling people, hey, in order to be successful, you need wealth, you need to get the validation of millions of people online externally, and you need to get materialistic items and women. And look at how great we're doing, right? But a true traditional male isn't worried about what other people think about him, and he's not worried in the entitled, selfish pursuit of doing whatever it is that he wants to do for money. It's more about what contributes the most value to the world, right? So if I had to guess what China would be more into, it would be guys that were athletes. It would be guys that started businesses. It would be guys that started families or overcame extreme adversity and saved lives or helped others or essentially took a role of what a traditional man should be, okay? Instead, what we're seeing are people being celebrated for doing effeminate sissy boy things. So that's where the government stands on it, okay? Now let's, let's read this a little further. Among the key points that were published in the South China Post, the media regulator says the media companies should boycott immoral and overly entertaining stars as well as sissy idols who go against correct beauty standards. Sissy idols is a direct reference to boy bands that enjoy massive popularity in China. Okay, and then they list a couple ones. According to the article, a long running target of criticism for wearing makeup and being focused on high fashion as opposed to what the state considers traditional masculine interests. The new regulations have now codified existing criticism. Wow, this is very interesting, okay? Basically, the government is saying, look, you guys are having the eyes of millions of people watching you and you are wearing makeup and focused on fashion as opposed to focusing on more masculine traditional things, right? I think what they're doing here is essentially saying that everybody just wants to be in a position where they get a bunch of attention and validation from others. And I think that is what the government is against. They also believe that these men not only are showing these values of success, but also doing it in a non-male way. So you guys can argue about whether they should be wearing makeup or not, but I kind of see what the government's doing. They want young men to grow up with better idols. And right now, people that are idolized are reality TV stars and social media influencers, not people that you should actually look up to, right? As well as banning on-screen idols and talent shows it deems unacceptable, the regulator is looking for professional entertainment industry commentators to call out stars and insist on correct political direction and values, criticize the fake, ugly, and evil values. Wow. See, this is super interesting, guys, because first and foremost, and I will get to this more later, China is communism, okay? You should never control what people are exposed to. But that is on a large basis of a country, right? Not on an individual basis. On an individual basis, that is solely up to our parents and our friends and ourselves to dictate. Because look, when I was a kid, I didn't get to play video games. My parents wouldn't buy me a gaming system. And because of that, I was not playing video games. I was spending time with others, or I was reading, or I was learning, and I was able to do good in school because I wasn't distracted, right? So instead of video games, the government here is trying to prevent people from watching reality TV and Instagram, essentially. Now, fundamentally, that should be the rights and decision on an individual basis. But what the government's doing is saying, no, nobody gets to watch it. We have decided that it's inappropriate. So, fuck all y'all. 
I'm against that, but in a weird way, I kind of understand what the government is doing because nowadays when you look at what the average kid wants to do, the top five desirable jobs are TikToker, YouTuber, Instagrammer, and then maybe you got like a singer and astronaut, okay? Those are like the top five, but it used to be doctor, firefighter, it used to be teacher, it used to be, well, astronauts are always cool, but it used to be like scientists. People used to actually want to change the world and provide value to others, right? When you're a doctor, you save lives. When you're a firefighter, you save lives. When you're an accountant, you solve problems for people to improve their lives. When you're an astronaut, you explore space and you do research so that if the earth ever becomes uninhabitable, we'll have solutions to leave the earth and go somewhere else so that the human race can continue, all right? And there's always been room for entertainers, okay? There's no point working tirelessly, saving lives and doing things that provide value for others if you can't watch a movie once in a while, if you can't listen to music you love. So there's always a space for people like this. But the problem is, Everybody has been convinced on the internet by people around them, especially social media, that everybody can be an influencer now. Everybody can be a social media star. In fact, if you're not one, then you're kind of a loser because look at all these people you know comparing themselves to others on social media, right? You see so many people that are unhappy now because the standards and expectations that they compare themselves to, to live up to, is guys like these that are young, good looking, have millions of followers and are showing materialistic items, right? And they're not doing traditional things that our families raised us to do, right? Everybody's fucking each other over. Everybody's gossiping. Everybody's doing vulgar, stupid stuff. And this is from somebody that's been doing that for years, right? So it is completely agreeable to realize that it is going to be a long-term issue when young people only want to be social media influencers because who else is going to take care of the world if everybody thinks that they are the one that can contribute value by filming themselves. If everybody just said, you know what, I want to film myself, I want to be a social media influencer, who's going to be saving lives, guys? <laughs> who's going to be building houses? Who's going to be building bridges? Who's going to be fixing roads? Who's going to be solving financial problems? Who's going to be developing medical practices so that people don't get sick as much, right? Nobody's doing that stuff like they used to because everybody is completely obsessed with and exposed to these people on the internet living these unrealistic lives and it, it's always been happening but it's way less controllable than it was before on an individual basis because we're monkeys with phones. We scroll through, we get dopamine, we go, oh. And like I said guys, you know, I've been doing that for years on my YouTube channel. You see a video, drunk interviews, you see hot chick with boobs, you go, oh my God, I'm gonna click that, right? Are you going to click that or are you going to click a novel or a podcast or an article about ancient history or the difference between neurons, right? We are so fucking simple in our minds that we go to click the things that give us dopamine, right? And it's starting to cause long-term damages. The idea of being masculine or macho is not doing what you want to necessarily, but doing what you have to, okay? Because when you're a man, you take on the role of protector, all right? If you have a kid, it doesn't matter what you do, you have to make sure that that kid is raised correctly and you have to make sure that they become better in the world. My parents' generation and uh, the people that gave birth to people my age in their 20s, is they didn't give a shit what they did for a living. They just wanted to earn enough money so that they could have kids that had it better than they did, okay? And they had it pretty good. It was pretty easy to buy a house back in the day, but now it's getting a lot harder and there's a lot of pressure on our younger markets, which is another thing. China is buying all the properties in Canada, which is jacking up the real estate. But there is so much fucking entitlement among young people that think that whatever it is that they wanna do, they get to do that for a living. That is a new concept, guys, okay? Now, as somebody that does something what they want for a living, I worked my ass off for it. But even I know that it's a gift, it's a fucking privilege, and it's not an entitlement. And the problem is a lot of young people are getting entitled to being these social media people. Here's an example I always use. If we went to war, another country was trying to totally take over our country, they were gonna come in, kill all of us, take all our stuff, burn us to the ground, right? And the country's like, okay, well, everybody that's young and able needs to fight, so conscription. They're gonna start 
with the entertainers first, all right? Because if you're a construction worker and you have a skilled trade and you're building stuff, or if you're a doctor and you're saving lives or you're a scientist, they're gonna be like, okay, you guys keep doing what you're doing. We need you to be saving lives. We need you to be building stuff, right? They're gonna to go to the people that we don't need. Think about it this way. When you are trying to limit your expenses, right? You have a budget. You make a certain amount of money each month. You're trying to save money so that you can buy something, okay? What's the first things you get rid of? The things that are unnecessary. You know what? I don't need to smoke. I don't need alcohol. I don't need junk food. I can cook food at my house. I don't need Netflix, right? And then you start to remove those things until you get to the core things, like the tough decisions. Hmm, do I need a car? Because I can get from this place to that place. Do I need a house? Right? Think about it that way, except with people in society and what they do to contribute, right? People in society that are entertainers, musicians, dancers, you know, YouTubers like me. I fucking love you. I love art. But realistically, you are the first ones to go when it comes to protecting our country. Because you can't convince me that it's more important for you to dance, make YouTube videos, or make music than it is for a guy that can build bridges save lives or research medical practices or science or even a teacher guys like i think that what china is doing is wrong but there is something to be said here to learn from because realistically these are things that shouldn't be enforced by a country as a whole but individually these are values that we should all have we all should strive not to be sissy effeminate men not to be social media influencers but actually provide value and do the right thing, make the universe better, okay? We've been having it too good for too long. We've been doing selfish shit, like, it's fun to be a menace to society and fuck with people and drink and throw your trash out the window and not recycle and all that, but it's gonna start catching up to us, guys. I can already see it catching up to us. The environment is shifting. It's way harder to buy houses than it used to be, and AI is slowly taking over a lot of jobs. And what I'm getting at is we need to stop thinking about ourselves and start thinking about others. How can we provide the most value to others? And that's something I've been experiencing lately. As I get older, it's less about me and more about everybody else. Sure, I would love to do this. Sure, I love doing YouTube videos, but I don't deserve it. I'm not entitled to it, okay? I should be doing whatever I need to so that I can help others, help my community, help my country, help my family, okay? Not what brings me joy. Now, there are ways to do both, okay? But the problem is too many people want to do the social media thing. And as somebody that's been on both sides, like before being a social media guy, during, and then after I stopped using social media, like the followers are all still there, but I just don't use it anymore because it's fucking toxic, right? You realize once you're there, that's not even what you wanted, okay? And all these people think that's what they want because it's all they're exposed to, it's all they're watching. And that's a big problem, man. People used to love being fucking tradesmen. They used to love being electricians. They used to love being teachers they used to love providing value to people in the world it used to be an honorable job to work at a retail store or a garage as like a mechanic or a guy that can help you find whatever you need to in the store but now we shit on those people we go oh pff, that guy works at fucking blah 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 you know he doesn't even have his own business he's not even how many followers does he have it's completely poisoning our minds so now we're gonna get to the china part so China, for the last couple of years, has been improving their GDP steadily. They are slowly building their middle class because years ago, we're like, you know what? We like to work as little as possible. We like to have a lot of land. We like to have fun stuff whenever we want, but that all costs money. So what if we just got our stuff to be made somewhere that it costs less to? And businesses were like, hmm, well, we can employ our own people here, pay them a good amount of money, or we could get people in China to build it using their materials very cheaply. And then we don't have to pay as many people here, but we still get the same amount of money, which means we get rich. And that's a capitalistic society. That's what we are, and that's what life is and business is. But China, they don't play like 10, 20 year terms. They play 50, 60, 70 year terms. So they are like, okay, we'll build all your stuff for you super cheap, no problem. And they do that for years and years and years until slowly but surely, all of these American and Canadian companies put our factories in China. So China is essentially responsible for the majority of our imports now, okay? And then China's like, well, now we're gonna start paying our employees a little more, and we're gonna start charging you a little more for the cost of goods. And we can be like, okay, 
fuck you guys, we're gonna put jobs back here. But that would take a lot of years and a lot of money that we don't have because businesses aren't ready to fucking pay people to build iPhones. For example, if an iPhone was built in the United States, it would cost between four to $5,000. So nobody wants to pay that much for an iPhone. They only wanna pay $1,000. That's why they're made in China, right? But if China starts raising their prices, we have to kind of go along with it because it would be totally unaffordable now for us to build them here as it would be if they were in China. So what ends up happening is China has leverage to slowly increase prices. Think about it this way, guys. Uber came out years ago. It was way cheaper than taxis, way cheaper than cabs. So everybody started using Uber. And now Uber's raising the price. In fact, Uber is now more expensive than a cab used to be, okay? But because of that convenience, because it's right there, we're like, fuck it, we'll just use Uber. And China's the same way. What made us wealthy in the first place was the middle class, right? North America, everybody generally is very similar in their incomes. We have like a nice middle ground. There's obviously the extremities and the lows. China used to be all low, a little bit high. But now, less and less people are low. More people are high still, but the middle class is growing, right? And the middle class is essentially when people have enough income that they can do things that would consider them in the middle of society. So for Canada, what is middle class? You have one person or two people, marriage, and they have enough money that they can purchase a house, a car to get to work, they can go out on weekends, have some entertainment, do fun stuff, go up to the cottage for vacation and raise kids and put them in public school. That is the middle class, right? And for years, China and a lot of other countries in the world didn't have that. But China has been slowly building it to the point where now they're a powerful society. And when China gets to the middle class stage, what are they gonna start doing? They're gonna do what we did. They're gonna be like, who can make our stuff for us cheaper, right? But they already make everything. So they're just gonna start charging us more. And what happens when they do that is they get more power financially. And when they get more power financially, more of that money goes into military. Traditionally, huge powers would take over the world and then other countries would have to team up to fight against them. That's what World War II was, okay? And the United States, which still is a great country but is not as great as it used to be, was able to save everybody's ass in World War II. And they were the epitome of freedom, okay? Everybody loved America. And right now, America's more divided than it ever has been. And in the meantime, China is slowly making a fuckload of money and building their own empire. The problem comes when at some point China decides we're gonna be evil and we're gonna take over the world, okay? I can't even scratch the surface with the amount of human rights violations that are going on over there and the shady stuff that they do with other countries in Asia. But the fact that they are now telling their own citizens, which nothing new, they've always been controlling what their citizens are exposed to, right? It's communism, you know, no YouTube, no Facebook, all that. But now they're also actively telling young people that even their own country's social media stars are a bad influence on them. You know what they're doing? They're getting ready for war. You can have all the money in the world, you can have all the people in the world, but if your people are soft, then they're not gonna last in times of war. China's been realizing that. They're like, hmm, our young men are way too infatuated by playing video games and wasting time on the internet. And I think that they realize that the people that they're raising aren't necessarily strong. And I think that Canada and the United States are a lot like that too. And it's one of those tough pills you gotta swallow. I've swallowed it many times, but what happens is you swallow the red pill and then things go really good and then you kind of forget what's actually up. And that up is that at the end of the day, we on a base level have to be okay with everything going to shit around us and being able to move forward, all right? If you get betrayed, if you get kicked out of a job, if you have no money and you have to survive, you have to be able to make it work. And nowadays, we're just filled with fucking pillows and cushions and life's too easy, life's too comfortable. And that is one of the things that's causing all these mental health issues in Canada. It's one of the things that's causing all these issues in the United States. And China is seeing it and they're nipping it in the butt as soon as they can. Because sure, we have freedom, which I think is still the optimal choice, but Eventually, we're all gonna become so fucking soft and divided that a country like China can just swoop in and take everything from us, right? So, the way that they're doing it, bad. But if it's the same ends to the means and they get all their guys in check and they stop idolizing social media people and they stop playing video games all the time, we're gonna have one hell of a fucking force to deal with because 
we are not going to be as disciplined as them. We are not going to be as skilled as them. And we are essentially going to be spoiled and entitled. And we're not going to want to go to war. So this is a fascinating article, guys. I went on a huge tangent there about China. But there's some good takeaways to learn from that, right? If you guys like these videos where I just go on tangents about random articles and shit I see, uh, drop it in the comments below. This video wasn't necessarily related to dating, but it is related to uh, males, especially young males, because we do become what we're exposed to and what we think is the best path we should follow. And we definitely shouldn't follow the path of China, but learn from what they're doing and kind of apply it. Be like, hmm, why would they be restricting people from video games and social media? Hmm, maybe they're preparing for war. Maybe they want their young men to have more purpose. Maybe they want their young men to pursue something with less vanity than being a social media influencer. Anyways, guys, I will see you all next week. Hope you enjoyed this little bonus video. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about video games, China sissy boys, and whatever. Peace out.